on behalf of the Anthony magazine I want to welcome you this panel discussion thank you very much uh, i know you all are coming from different parts of the world mm -hmm. i'll introduce myself first my name is ranjita um, i am a teacher by profession um, i love to read literature mm -hmm. is my passion i read a lot i write some here and there um, I have been uh, connected to multiple magazine endeavors last for last six years. I am editor of a global magazine called Bathayon and recently Antonin, which is a wonderful, wonderful online magazine. I just love the philosophy to connect people from all over the world. Um, so, you know, this is not a formal, uh, formal kind of setup. So I will invite you to introduce yourself to say a few words about yourself uh, so we uh, i am sure throughout the discussion we will have better chance to know each other also so carl how about you um, introduce yourself first hi thank you uh, uh for uh making me part of the discussion i'm carl hayward i live in uh, san francisco uh from washington dc originally uh I'm an artist, I write, um, I uh, am an educator as well, um, mixed media art is what I do. I have an equal interest or passion in uh, both the arts and literature, and uh, I work with a group called Global Art Project, we are 63 artists in 17 countries, we've been doing this since around 2011. Uh, prior to the pandemic, I would say obviously we usually have uh, month-long residencies, uh, Italy, Mexico, uh, we were in Senegal uh, last year. Um, so in the best of times, we do these residencies and they usually consist of collaborative exhibitions, uh, performance, uh, something else, a collaborative or solo uh, studio time and usually have about 24 hour access to this. And we'll talk more about collaboration as we, oh. uh, Radina, if you say a few words about yourself now. Hello everyone, I'm Radina Dimitrova. I'm a Chinese literature and especially Chinese poetry translator. I live in Mexico City uh, more than 10 years now. Uh, and I'm also sharing my time between teaching and, and translating. Uh, I teach at the National Autonomous National University of Mexico, uh, language and Chinese uh, Spanish translation. Uh, uh, my my personal projects are lately much more concentrated on on poetry. And that's that's what I that's what I do. I'm a two-time immigrant. First, I immigrated to China. Then I just realized it's um, the the things that I do and the the things that I want to do. They don't. Uh, it's not. It won't be really helpful staying in in China because I studied Asian Chinese literature. So you can't teach. Mm -hmm. To Chinese people, <laughs> being much more focused and and, and uh, like organized uh, pre, uh, prim primarily on teaching, and translation goes goes with the flow. <laughs> so mm. that that's what I that's what I do here. Thank you so much. Thank you, Radina. Uh, now I will um, I'll request Jashodhara. Thank you, Ranjita, and thanks the Antonim uh, team. Mm -hmm. And uh, hi to everyone. Uh, I am Yashodhara Roy Choudhury. I hail from Kolkata, which is uh, in the eastern part of India. I write in Bengali from my childhood. Uh, then I grew up, I studied philosophy. Uh, I work for the Indian government. So I am a civil servant by profession and writing is my passion. So I started uh, with writing poetry, but then I uh, also wrote short stories uh, and lots of articles. And now last 10 years I have been writing on women's issues. I sometimes write in English when it's, uh, I feel that I should communicate to a larger audience. And uh, I have uh, around 30 books published, out of which around 15 are poetry collections. 
and the rest are uh, some of short stories i also uh, studied french and so i translate from the original french into bengali and i have translated so far three books so i am i can say i am also a dabbler i translate i write and uh, as a professional i do auditing of the indian government <laughs> it's very it's very exciting how you all have so much experience uh, with multiple genres with multiple languages mind uh, speaking if you saying a few words about yourself sure um so um i'm ahmed masood i'm a writer and theater director um i am originally from palestine from the gaza strip uh in palestine a place you may have heard a lot about in the news mm. um but i live in london i've been living in london for a while um but i go very often to gaza i've got all my family are over there um i've written novels and plays um a few are published um so yeah um this is just very quick introduction about me i write in english mostly i don't write in arabic um and i work for a university here in london called regent's university london um so yeah this is it uh, thank you so much thank you for joining right. us i want to thank you um my my question to you the now that i have you all we have been we have artists translator poets this time is a history making time a global pandemic um it's an ex- it's kind of a lifetime experience now historically we all know that art is often product of its own time uh, if i think about the two world wars there are so many movies that were made based on those two big events um so many poems that have been written so many novels so many paintings so many artists poets and literary enthusiasts were inspired by those um by different aspects of those big events so right now as we are going through this uh, global um, pandemic do you see that reflected in today's art and literature and how do you see it reflected that's my question to you all whoever wants to speak first feel free to go ahead and then the others can jump in um Radina do you want to go first my experience was uh, also uh, through translation there was a very big uh, project here making a, a a university here called Wam Kohimalpa made a big platform together with the 17 critique U- uh, institute and uh, in half a year they gathered like uh, 180 participations from 37 countries so i was I was in charge of Chinese uh, Spanish translation and I translated like 10 authors uh, prose uh, diaries uh, extracts or some poems uh, so my experience uh, was uh, through people's experiences like I I saw what other people feel how they uh, how they underwent uh, all this very difficult process in China I think know very little about um, the quarantine there you know that china is not usually letting much information out but the good thing was that actually even the chinese government realized that suppressing information and and communication in times like that is not going to work quite well so even censorship was uh, kind of um, um, it, it, they didn't proceed as harshly as as they usually do let's, mm. let's just put it in in these terms and people were let uh, they, they could communicate freely uh, uh, in the chinese uh, social uh, media they could express their anger their frustration it was uh, for me the most important part actually it's kind of side of the things that were written and produced as art because there were many people who uh, who suggested that this uh, first literature works uh, produced right from the pandemic and right from the confinement maybe they are not uh, they are not the literature uh, they don't yep. have 
such a funny teacher quality. But right. uh, actually, yes, the, the big thing was <clears throat> that there was this little territory of free speech, at least for a couple of months, uh, that uh, that happened in China. Th this was actually for me the big the big happening, you know, and and the big <laughs> art. <laughs> something that in China really can be qualified as, as art because it doesn't really happen. It was something very extraordinary. So through these texts, I actually saw reality. And I do believe that some of them are also quite good literature quality. Yeah, I, 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 it's interesting uh, because primarily this panel is made up of people uh, involved in literature. And though I do have that cross-section uh, in recent years, uh, maybe the last 10, 15 years, it's been a focus on the visual arts. And uh, you've, you've just made a, a great point that I'm in total agreement with, or that my, my uh, experience is very similar. In the visual arts, and I, I guess universally, there's the sense of hysteria, panic, paranoia, uncertainty, uh, and mixed with optimism. And these may be the, the sorts of uh, impetus uh, that will create good art, visual, you know, in movement, dance, and theater, etc. At some point in time, I don't think so at this moment. The 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 impact of things like and and and, and there's a myriad of uh, of influences right now, uh, including social media, uh, the internet, the access that everyone has to a typewriter or keyboard or a a, a, a sketch pad, if you will. Uh, and then able to expose it or present it, uh, it, it, it's a democratization of the creative process, which is a wonderful thing. And my group is all about that, as a matter of fact. But at the same time, does what's happening now out of the pandemic, does it qualify as art? I think uh, I worked uh, uh, with a uh, gallerist on a, uh, a series of broadcasts called Take a Breath. And it was basically, let's step back a moment. Let's not feed into the paranoia, the hysteria, the uncertainty, and let's try to just uh, stabilize ourselves a little bit so we can observe a little better what the a fuller impact of uh, the pandemic is. Uh, in the States, and I think, I think it's probably universal or, or known universally, simultaneous to the pandemic was also the, if you will call it an insurrection, the uh, Black Lives Matter movement, the uh, murders of uh, Breonna Taylor and uh, George Floyd, the pandemic, which also has elements of uh, politics, of uh, uh, social order, uh, and of control, misinformation, the media, et cetera. So all of these things are not separate entities. They're all interrelate because none of this happens in isolation. So because we're a pop culture, the almost a diversion is, hey, you know what? Go take a picture, go paint a picture, go write a poem and put it on social media or you know, create a, a chat room about it or whatever it may be. And these are very good therapeutic things, but I think its value is strictly therapeutic at this moment. I would agree, That's I would, I would agree with all of that, to be honest with you, because yeah. I think one of the things that the um, pandemic has shown is that it, it highlighted um, social in, inequality more yeah. so than it did before. Yeah. It yeah. highlighted sort of the division uh, the of society increased the level of antagonism and racism mm. with certain mm. sort of groups, especially with the closure of borders, especially with calling it, yes. calling the, the, the pandemic a certain country's uh, violence, mm. you know, uh, mm. the, the, the rise of the extreme right, as Carl said, you know, all of that mm. actually suddenly the kind of inequality, the social inequalities were pulled out quite yes. in front of us, right in front yeah. of our eyes. Which is something as artists, as uh, writers, and, and myself, mm -hmm. I'm not just a writer, I also do dance and I do other stuff mm -hmm. as well. So, mm -hmm. something that I've been fighting for a long time in my art, you know, and suddenly to yeah. see it there was actually quite shocking, you know, to see it right mm -hmm. so visibly in front mm -hmm. of me. Because most mm -hmm. of the time it's been underlined, it's been yeah. kind of hidden, masked, disguised through some sort of democratic system, you know. Uh, but suddenly, it, during the pandemic, they were there. Obvious, you know, we our society here in London was kind of very divided about certain issues. Even like with lockdown, there's the class. Mm -hmm. Everybody was joking about the class 
society is divided into two classes those with gardens and those without you know mm -hmm. <laughs> and thing, you know um so it was obvious and then how do you create art and all of that and, but even if you look at also some of the kind of looking at the british uk stuff for example the the, the virtual artist stuff it's all commissioned to big names big celebrities of doing stuff on tv yeah. on zoom or whatever um, even the grants, the art grants are going to big theatres and are doing big yeah. projects. Um, but for me, I don't think there's much happening in there. Um, so there's very little space for There's so much to read about the pandemic, so much to absorb, so much to right. worry about, so much stress. And then suddenly you yeah. want me to be creative? And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, I think yeah. I'm taking my time. I need to observe, I need to see, yeah. and I think I'll be able Absolutely. to reflect. I can, yeah, I can come in here because uh, when... Uh, uh, Mr. Masa <laughs> talked about this reflection, time for reflection. I always mm. felt that when I write, I need some time to reflect. So yes. something which is happening now, it's very fresh and very raw. So I, I could never write on that. I could never think that I can create something on that. But this time, mm. because of the sheer volume or maybe the intensity of the feelings, I was scribbling something and then mm -hmm. later I was thinking, uh, can I translate it into poetry or is it at all poetry or it's just scribbling? So you don't, you that, those uh, lines are very uh, hazy, uh, the lines between uh, just a scribbling and mm. uh, poetry which you construct and uh, you all, and uh, as you rightly said, too much of information is being uh, mm. bombasted on you. And mm -hmm. it's because I think this time WhatsApp, Facebook and mm. the social media has played a very huge role because you come to know about other countries. Somewhere in Italy, there's a lockdown or in France, there's a lockdown and you get affected by that. And it's always like flooding you with so much of information that you forget how to react. There's yeah. no time to react, but still out of your own anxiety and because you have to release yourself, you're writing something. Mm. And then you're thinking whether I'm at all doing the correct thing because I don't know whether it's poetry at all. So I will just give you one uh, good news that as Ranjita was asking that what happened during the pandemic, what happened to poetry. Uh, Penguin, uh, a Penguin has brought out this book. This is called Singing in the Dark. This is a poetry collection anthology of 100 poets uh, from 20 languages. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it, it was edited by Sachidanandan, who is an Indian poet. And my poetry has also come, uh, got its place in it. So this was something which was put together only the poetry in reaction to the pandemic situation was mm. collected here. And uh, mm. I think in Indian subcontinent, what happened was not exactly the pandemic. But the reaction to it, the lockdown which was enforced on people and uh, job losses due to the lockdowns. And uh, you may have seen in the news that in India, there are lots of migrating workers who stay in a very distant place for their work. And they had to travel on feet because there was no train no uh, plane, nothing, no connectivity was there. So they were walking on the streets, on the highways with whatever belongings they could gather. And they were traveling with the entire family from a very far off place like Mumbai. They are going to Bihar, which is uh, maybe thousand kilometers away. And many people died on the road because of <laughs> either exhaustion, or some illness. It was not death due to the pandemic, but it was the fallout of pandemic. Right. And we were so affected by that. We all felt as if our memories of when we heard in the childhood that there was uh, in 1947, we had independence, but it followed 
uh, it was followed mm. with uh, partition. So after mm. partition, we know that there was mass exodus from one country to another because of the religion. Mm. This right. time it was because of job loss and because they could not stay in the cities because there was no food. They had to walk miles and miles. So this was terrible mm -hmm. human crisis which came out of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And everybody in India, every creative person in India had to react somehow. Exactly. So our writings were mostly on that, on exactly. the human crisis out of the lockdown. And that's mm -hmm. what came from everyone, what you, all of you said just now. Uh, pandemic is one thing, like an yeah. infectious disease spreading across the world is one, mm -hmm. just one aspect of it. Right. But it has affected our lives in from, in so many different areas. Socio-political, mm -hmm. economic issues are all connected to this event. And that's what when something this big happens, uh, it's always like this. I mentioned the two world wars in the beginning. Yes. Uh, Yashodi, you just mentioned about uh, partition of India. It's not just that partition, but it touches so many aspects of people's lives. And um, from my experience, what I have read or what I have watched, I have seen that artists um, recreate those events from many different perspectives. Mm -hmm. So uh, do you see that? Do you see like there is an urge to produce more. I know Carl, you mentioned something like it's almost therapeutic, like we have yeah. to somehow channelize our fear, our anxiety, the loss, like so many people died. All of yeah. that, sometimes, and Yashodi, you also mentioned that I scribbled something just to express myself. And Radina, you right. mentioned the big work that's happening in the field of translation. Do you feel like there, uh, the volume of creation in those areas have reached um, to, like a lot in a large amount, like artworks are being produced in large amount, stories are, mm -hmm. a lot of stories are written. Do you think uh, that's what is happening? Because people resort to those kind of activities kind of as a therapy. Yeah, definitely, uh, and I think that's its uh, its greatest value at the moment uh, is uh, primarily therapeutic. Uh, again, I think we've all touched upon uh, a desire for a certain kind of equality. What what our own standards are, what we recognize in the art of others or the creative uh, output of other people. Uh, I I it's not to put a necessarily a negative value judgment on what's being produced right now. Uh, Yoshu had mentioned uh, something that uh, I think is really important that I practice, I find that I practice as a visual artist, and that is these notes or these uh, uh, comments, uh, these almost uh, journalistic or uh, diary-like uh, scribblings, if you will, uh, they not only serve as uh, something that's therapeutic, they also serve, I think, as uh, footnotes uh, or something to uh, reference so that I can go back and look at what I was processing, whether I consciously was aware of it. And you know, we're only talking about a period of one year, almost literally today, if you will, this week, one year of a declared recognized pandemic. So this is, this is like, I won't call it a watershed moment, but I would say we have this incredible backlog of recent shared universal experience that as I talk to more people about it, and I've been a little resistant or reluctant because I've felt that, wow, is, if what I'm thinking and seeing is really happening, we're in a lot of trouble. So the more I talk to people, I'm seeing that there is a similarity in that perception. Yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a great way to look at it. It does teach us to be um, humble to life. Yeah. And yes. uh, Redina, I would yeah. like you to comment on, and uh, you should <laughs> Um, I just, uh, Rajita, could I just read my one of my poems, which just today came out in the antonym? Because as you said, talked about, Carl, you talked about the false uh, fake news mm. and all that. Mm. I felt that uh, the WhatsApp University, as they call it, the WhatsApp <laughs> University What's was spreading too much of fear, <laughs> too much of fear about the <laughs> pandemic. 
yeah. whatever was the reality we were actually fearful because of the spread of news and too much of mm. uh, being mm. blasted uh, with all that news so i yeah. just wanted to read a poem because it will be better it will be talking better to you rather than me talking this is called now i am just reading one part of it second part fear flees from group to group fear leaps like a blob of flame like a virus contagious like mm. a boil full of bubbling pus nauseating the bare facts and the half truths twisted and sharp like a witch's nail they hop through groups it won't be right to just call it just grim call it it won't be right to just think it wrong or bloody it's ache with a zest it's murder by tickles it's a torture mm. a long slow process the way the traders of terror skin and rub salt fear rolls fear is rubbed into misery mm. fear is the most valuable stock they invest in fear and make a living make one dwell with another this is how they turn fear into bricks turn bricks into walls then wall it up to build a great big silence mm, very nice very nice wow yes thank you nice. thank you yes, absolutely now, redina and ahmed if you um say something you share your thoughts on this like how how do you see it all contained the trend yeah. its impact do you want to go first redina or do you want me to yes go ahead okay all right um i mean i think it's it's an interesting one i think what carl was saying around you know the impact of the pandemic um i think when this the kind of the process of writing about it and reflecting about it i think pandemics tend to be missed from art and literature generally like who who mm -hmm. has written about this yeah history? yeah I mean, yes very right, little right, right. literature right. We've written about the great war far more than yes the spanish flu yes the plague, the plague itself was not you know i mean it's mentioned mm -hmm. in some mm -hmm. history books and some literature but mm -hmm. i mean that shakespeare lived in the times of the kind of big plague and he mentions it sort of kind of vaguely in past. Case, yes you know, it's not really the thing yeah. the thing that affects artists and and writers in general is the social political situation that that they live through and that is that is crucial to their life you know um however i mean to be to be honest i mean i have felt the the, the pandemic because when i do theater it's, 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 i miss theater of course like, of course it plays sure. on and audience and people coming to a venue yeah, 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 i've missed yeah. that you know um i've missed meeting people you know and mm. like connecting with other fellow artists i mean this is great this is brilliant don't mm -hmm. get me wrong this is amazing mm -hmm. but no, no, you no. know it, you do not connect on the same human level you don't go for a drink at the bar afterwards and just right. connect to some stuff and then suddenly ideas and and collaboration and then you know you're working with this designer and that designer and you're writing this story and that commission and mm -hmm. i missed i missed that i think that has had an impact uh on me um but is it a huge impact is it something that is actually going to stop me from producing work i don't think so Uh, I don't think like I am a worse writer than I was a year ago. Right. You know, right. if, if anything, I've actually taken back a little bit. I've read a lot. Yeah, it's been good. As Carl said, it's, it's, been, it's been all right. You know, uh, read a lot. Um, reflected on my work. Reflected where I wanted to be. What do I need to do next? What is important? Um, and all these things. And I hope that you know. I would use the connections that I've made so far during this time virtually to later on when I'm able to travel and see people to really connect mm. with them physically and say hey we did that webinar yeah. together we did that zoom talk together I'm I'm in town let's have a drink let's have a yeah. chat yeah. Uh, I've got this project I, you know so hopefully it will be actually quite good because I am actually this is recently I started doing this only the last couple of weeks I've started making a list of all the people I met virtually. We've got an Excel sheet now, so just so mm -hmm. I don't forget, because right. once the email is buried in your inbox somewhere, right. in right. time, you're not going to remember this, you know. Right. Right. Um, 
and it's just nice to connect with fellow artists and, and stuff. Yes. And I miss it. I, I think that is the impact on it because I get I get a real kick out of meeting other creative people. Uh, I myself am, am not a not a creator. Uh, that's I think is the the difference here. So I <laughs> when I talk about the experiences I have, I always have to just refer to the experiences of others. My direct mm. actually was through my students, and it was mm -hmm. very info for me to discover that people who are like um, 20 i'm 40 and they have depression and they're taking medicines yeah. <laughs> and yeah. i also like carl felt okay it's really not affecting me but what about young people yeah, I yeah. Have yeah. you're right institutions. it was terrifying for me to see how young people are affected by the pandemic by the fact that they can't go out of their uh, houses where sometimes they're right. so relationships and actually I realized the university uh, is actually a paradise for them and for many mm. of them, mm. not being able to reach there, not being able to be among uh, the, the other uh, people at their age with their interests, but being stuck at home with, with difficult family situations, it's really not, not helpful. So I also uh, felt like, wow, it's not really affecting me that much, but look yeah. what Good point. Uh, it I had to uh, really change a lot of how how I conduct the the classes. I had yeah. to think of making things much more fun than mm -hmm. usual because really uh, they 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 need much more fun now than than yeah. pressure studies. That's yeah. that's the personal thing. And about the professional thing, I really had the chance, thanks to the pandemic, actually to do much more translation because mm -hmm. Mexico a huge and monstrous place and you waste a lot of time in transportation even to mm. buy places <laughs> it is very complicated and it's very huge so i could actually finish a couple of books like poetry books and educational books <coughs> going to be published soon so it had a positive impact that i don't go out and i can spend all the time that i usually waste in transportation right. and spend it right. on creative right. things right about about the pandemic, it was actually ironic for me that this uh, that this um, uh, spring of fear, the pandemic, actually came out in the most fearless place in China. Before immigrating to Mexico, I studied three years in Wuhan. I love this place. I love these people. They're very contestatory. They're very rebellious. So okay. I don't a video when some politicians went there and tried to make this uh they were like very very fakely preoccupied about the population and the population would, would go to the windows and shout at them diada diada which means uh, you're fake <laughs> so yeah. people are not easy to handle so it was a, yeah. a really fearful thing happened these very fearless people uh, in the first place hey. so i think they were brilliant example you know about the writer fang fang uh, who is from Wuhan, who is the author of this uh, Wuhan diary that is already translated in several languages and actually first in the States. Uh, so it, it was a good thing. Like it, it was even the voice of a woman from Wuhan that actually came to represent all the, all the resentment to the pressure, to the censorship, mm -hmm. fakeness and all this stuff. So it was, it was ironic, but for me, it was a good thing. Uh, and uh, it created, maybe right now there are not this high level literature text and, and mm -hmm. art creation. Maybe there are very much spontaneous things coming out, like mm -hmm. Carl, like diaries, scribblings. There is an example of a woman, of a, a poet and author, that actually I translated a part of her diary uh, for this big uh, platform here in Mexico. Uh, it's called something like. The, uh, the confinement diary, Bitacura del Encierro, mm -hmm. it's everything is online and just now they are mm -hmm. going to publish a book. But apart from tags, they put a lot of videos and stuff. So one of the 10 Chinese authors was this female writer, Wu Ang, uh, and I translated a part of her diaries. She was conducting a, a, a writing workshop called Su Writing, and all of a sudden they turned into volunteers. So mm -hmm. uh, Maybe her diary is not very much of a literature work, yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. but has, it is, has an impact. It, it gives testimony to the stuff that was going yeah. on and how people yeah. that were involved in literature creation all of a sudden turned into a voluntary unit. Uh, yeah, yeah. 
I, I'm expecting her to create exactly through reflection and through the pass of time. She will get, I guess, create poetry. She will create uh, maybe essays or or some narrative. So maybe the first thing was spontaneous and it's not very much of a literature thing, but it has its own value. And I'm really expecting her to create Absolutely. in the future more stuff. And there are also contrary examples, for example, <clears throat> A very big poet uh, who uh, even created the concept of uh, viral poetics, uh, mm -hmm. and he dedicated a couple of uh, the issues of uh, Survivors Poetry magazine to the pandemic creation, and there are a lot of poetry there uh, which created from the pandemic. Yeah. And a very special case is uh, a novelist, Lin Bai, who actually in the pandemic rediscovered her poetry, uh, uh, like poetry, I don't know how to say it, uh, a part of herself was, was a poetry woman a very mm. long time ago, uh, but mm. she dedicated most of her uh, literature effort to novels, so all of a sudden she rediscovered poetry writing in the pandemics and she made a sequence of poems focused on an apple that was getting rotten on, on her windowsill. Right. So she was living the writing poet poem after poem i think she, she came up to 40 i think mm -hmm. there are images reflections and everything spreading from this very very concrete very concise image that she was observing every single day and i do see a big literature achievement here because i did translate mm -hmm. a couple of her poems and i'm even thinking of translating the whole series because mm -hmm. it is a very thorough reflection starting from pandemic and starting right. from people. So there are different examples when you when you just get closer and when you see how things develop, you, you see a lot of superficial stuff, but you also yeah, yeah. see people that could really stick to something very simple right. And, right. and really develop an, an idea that goes within this uh, viral poetics that, that Yang Lian proposed. And I think it will develop maybe in some... <clears throat> literature, uh, literature right. uh, I don't know, trends with time. Mm -hmm. So these are my observations here. The effect of pandemic, it's such a big, big topic. And um, I am really, I, I feel so enriched as I hear from you mm -hmm. all. Um, we all have to adopt uh, new ways of life because of the pandemic, connecting with people virtually. I think is one of the major, major um, changes that we incorporated in our lifestyle. Um, I am an educator myself and establishing Google Classroom, connecting to the kids on screen that, um, that has a huge impact on how <laughs> we teach, how we deliver instruction. Uh, same thing, in art and Ahmed, you mentioned before that yes, you miss people, you want people to come to the theater, that one-on-one uh, -on -one connection. Um, so my question is, how does, how does, how connecting with people virtually, creating things virtually and reaching out to your audience or readers virtually, how, um, how has that shaped your work? Um, I, the class, I teach in, a, in an elementary class, so I work with the preteen and teenage children, elementary, junior high students, we do class play. And this year, how we did our class play is the kids, they recorded their part and sent the video to someone who put it together and made it mm -hmm. a link. And as a class, we will watch that link one day and that's our class play. It's a very different experience um, from going to the theater, practicing saying your lines and presenting it to the in front of the whole school. Um, so I'm sure you all see, you all experience it in your field of work. So if you talk about that a little bit. Yeah, I mean, it's been, Interesting. Um, I don't know if it's full, if it's going to be successful. This virtual kind of artistic work. I've done a number of readings online of plays and things like that. Um, 
And mostly I just couldn't wait until it ends, to be honest. <laughs> you know, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Great, you know, and, and sometimes I have like 200 people in the reading, right. which is great. Um, but there is no, yeah, it, it becomes quite repetitive. It becomes, there is no difference to it. You just, it's the same screen, it's the mm -hmm. same kind of yeah. virtual boxes, whatever yeah, yeah, yeah. it is. Um, you can do that. And I think it's interesting. It's a different experience. Um, is it going to last? Is it going to be sustainable? I don't know. I don't know about that. Um, once theatres are open again and live events, is anybody going to sit and listen to um, an online reading? I'm not mm. so sure. Um, mm -hmm. There might be some stuff. Like, I mean, I've enjoyed some of the seminars and conferences and workshops where I couldn't go to because uh, either I'm working during the day right. uh, and I love those ones with a panel discussion where you can switch your camera off and have yeah. it there it's almost like having the radio on your hand you know and you just get on yeah. with doing things and there's that voice in there and then suddenly there are some great, <coughs> ideas, great arguments uh being presented and, and that is amazing you know um yeah but apart from that actually i've resorted to just reading and kind of looking at Personally, if I want to enjoy something, I'm, I'm, I'm going for an audiobook. I'm just kind of letting my imagination, nourishing my imagination as much as possible. Mm -hmm. um, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if it's going to be sustainable. I have mm -hmm. a very specific question for you. It came to my mind as I was talking to you. Like, you know, when we are reading a play, now play has both aspects. You can read a play, you can perform a play. Will the playwrights uh, be writing stage direction? Now that they are, if they are mm. writing play um, at this time, are there plays that are written without stage direction? Because if mm. they are not performed on the stage at this point, particularly during the quarantine, will there be plays written without stage direction? And how people, uh, the readers or performers, uh, 20, 25 years down the road, how will they see it? I don't know. That's yeah, it's an interesting question, actually. Um, <coughs> yeah, it's, it's a very good question. I don't know the answer to that, to be honest, but I think I, I don't think any writer would write now purely for a virtual play, mm. you know? I think mm. he would write a play. Uh, and, and normally a writer or any artist would produce a, a work. doesn't matter where it's going to be displayed. I mean, I'm sure, Carl, when you're doing a visual art, stuff you don't say this is for that exhibition or that right. you know festival you know you just basically right, go right. for it and, exactly. and create yeah, out of yeah, your imagination yeah, yeah. it's the same for me here and i think the medium of how you present the play becomes irrelevant uh, as it were uh, i'm writing this play at the moment and uh i don't even mention the pandemic in it at all i just like it's, it's almost it doesn't exist it's just mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. if it gets to be performed on zoom and online then I'll have to adjust and I have to write extra stage directions. Mm -hmm. um, but one of the plays that we've do I've done, uh, I've had to read out the stage directions as mm -hmm. if we were on stage. Um, mm -hmm. And I would still say um, he exits stage. He enters from the right. left. <laughs> he, uh, right. the, uh, uh, stage goes dark, and but everybody's there. Everybody can see him. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But Ranjita, uh, can yeah. I come in? Ranjita, uh, you know, uh, we grew up on radio plays. So radio mm -hmm. plays or sound plays, audio plays. Audio mm -hmm. plays. Truti what, what we call yep. it. That mm -hmm. was already there. That was already mm -hmm. there. And audio books yeah. also are becoming very popular now. Mm -hmm. So I think that exactly. audio uh, medium is always there. Yeah. It, ca it can become a second layer. like But there's no substitute for going to a theater and mm -hmm. getting immersed in a play. Exactly. Watching a play with uh, a hall full of people, spectators. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. a different feeling and one doesn't want to let go that kind of experience. So um, I will ask another specific question. All the changes that we uh, that are incorporated in presentation, in artwork, in uh, stories, poems, um, do you think um, some of those will have lasting impact? Sure. I do. I do. Uh, I think that we're in a really rich 
potentially a rich period where, for instance, uh, you as an educator, for instance, we're talking about you have to adapt into Google uh, Classroom, blah, blah, blah. You know what? Everyone is going to have this access uh, to or, or has now the access to the technology, be it your 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 watch, telephone. And, you know, you can you can broadcast and reach thousands and thousands of people uh, that was not possible even, you know, 20 years ago, et cetera. So the it's a democratization, not only the creative process, it's a democratization of communication of media and technology. And the point of it is even it, talking about um, will there be stage direction? Will, as you had just asked, will this uh, technology, uh, this pandemic era technology uh, that's been necessitated because of the pandemic, will that uh, persist? And it will. Creative people will find ways to use whatever tools and materials are available to you. That's what we do anyway. Be it a, a pencil, a typewriter, uh, a chisel, a rock and, and a file. Uh, we, we use what's available to us to communicate uh, whatever our vision is. Um, for me, now, speaking of technology and, and kind of piggyback on what Ahmed was talking about with his uh, virtual experience uh, as a uh, playwright uh, uh, reader, um, we had to be really patient in using uh, 3D virtual tours because the technology is pretty lousy. Uh, and it's, it's sort of like used car salesmen, like, hey, you know what, you're in a pandemic, why don't you use this tool, et cetera, et cetera. And the tool's no good. So you have to be patient and find uh, uh, manufacturers or uh, video uh, uh, operators, videographers who can creatively and effectively create uh, uh, a 3D virtual tour. We were lucky we found that. So what do you do as a media person? You have this tool. You also try to, in a, uh, a, uh, a physical site, pandemically safe with distancing, et cetera, make appointments so someone can come in and look at a show in a museum or a gallery. You, uh, as a promoter or a presenter, then figure out ways to uh, effectively use your uh, electronic component through social media. You do your teasers and promos, etc. And so it's it's you kind of rise to the occasion, and everyone's not going to be able to do that, and that's and that's okay. Uh, so you find the exceptional technology, you find the exceptional piece of art, the space to do it in, and then you discover ways to present it. It's really the pandemic is really just not just, but it has created, um, it has necessitated creative problem solving. And that's that's really what it's about. Um, the I think the question that for me is more important is how much do I want to depend upon that? And is, is, is this going to be like the complete wave of the future or is going to be part of the future? Um, so there's, there again, this idea about this uh, creative uh, uh, problem solving. What impact do I want to have? What experience do I want to impart upon my viewing audience uh, and other uh, artists, etc.? And do I need to incorporate everything? Am I trying to just simulate a, a physical experience that was prior to the pandemic? Or am I able to, through some patience and processing, what's the best way to uh, achieve my, my goals as an artist? Uh, maybe that's a lot more important than even speculating. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? I think a, a lot yeah, of it you. also is that people yeah. want to think of art as is with the audience in mind rather than actually the reason mm. we create art is because we want to create art. It's, right. There's an urge and right. need within us to create something artistic, you know. And I think how it gets to the audience later on is either the artist right. will find a way of doing it or somebody else will. You know? Right, <laughs> it right. Will get, it will get there in, in yeah, a sense. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, theatre and other sort of means um, and exhibitions and live events and, you know, galleries, I think they might transform to some sort of medium online in terms of maybe broadcasting stuff you know that mm -hmm. happened there as a live event uh, but i think the planning and the essence of creating something will be with the idea that there are people and there are events and there are live stuff happening on that site uh, because otherwise they will lose their identity you know they will lose what they are 
So imagine, for example, a theatre, the National Theatre in the UK and here, if it goes completely online, yeah, we will have a name, the National Theatre, but actually is it a National Theatre? It could be anything. I could set up a website and broadcast mm -hmm. plays then uh, anyway. It sure. loses that essence to it. So um, I think there will the kind of the way the world is going with education with different sectors is that you are going into a blended learning model blended sort of right. experience model blended. Right. everything is going to have to be blended otherwise you will lose either or those who are not going to come to live events and those who want to go to live events so mm -hmm. you're not going to you're not going to win either way yeah mm. yeah and you know i know visual arts it's the um change the new ways are very prominent. Um, I would mm -hmm. come to Yashodi and Radina. How do you see um, the use of technology in the field of book publishing? Uh, are there more ebooks that are being published these days? Um, I know there are yes. lots of online webzines and magazines that are coming up. So if you mm -hmm. comment a little bit on that. Uh, it was already there. Actually, the movement for webzines and ebooks that was already gaining momentum. But during the pandemic period, they really uh, were, became useful and people started doing it more and more. So that way, uh, we never felt that we are out of touch. I think it's more pertinent for visual artists and for theater personalities that they really feel the difference. Okay, now I will ask a question to you, particularly Yashodi and Radina, feel free to jump in, please. Do you think like the form and content of literature has changed because of this um, no, because I of don't the incorporation think, I of don't, technology? Uh, no, I don't feel that the content has changed. What I feel is that last year we were not going out. We were sitting at home. Mm -hmm. uh, we could take up a lot of projects which were not being taken up because of dearth of time. We were not having the time because of travel or mm. maybe meeting people. So more solitary time has somehow become a good thing for me because I could gather a lot of old stuff and then start collect, uh, start making an anthology of my own poems and all those things I could take up because earlier I was not having that solitary time. I so think it's a positive mention, Radina also mentioned that earlier, like that the mm. quarantine or uh, solitary time, which is so essential for the creative people. Um, mm. We all know Rilke's famous uh, letters to a young poet and what his comment was on that, like solitude and resilience. It's mm. like a seed, it's like quiet. We don't see its growth, mm. but uh, it's just the mind, its transformation takes place. Um, mm. So Radina, if you want to, um, if you, so my specific question is this use of technology, like incorporation of technology, do you see a direct impact of that, not in the process, but what is being produced in form and content of literary work? Uh, I, I will again, like, uh, adopt this double point of, of view because really most of my work right now goes into academic uh, development mm -hmm. and teaching. Mm -hmm. So, yes, of course, the, the impact is huge and something very important that Carl mentioned, the democratization of information and what's more, of, yeah. of knowledge. I have never been to the States, I've never even had a visa and right now I'm attending seminars uh, <laughs> Columbia, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Week, I can right. think, I can listen. Uh, really high, top-notch uh, academicians mm -hmm. and creators speak about Chinese literature, Japanese art. I would have never been able to attend and and have all this knowledge and increase my personal knowledge as value and value as an academician and and translator. If if pandemic uh, didn't happen, because yeah. no one, I think that. <coughs> like this high level academic and research places, they would have never gone online and they have never put their contents online. So really right. thanks to the pandemic, we have this democratization process yeah. where 
people that would never have the access to this level of knowledge. Uh, right now we have, and I I'm really am, am a beneficiary of, of this event. Uh, about editorial strategies, I see them changing because my husband works in one of the biggest uh, libraries here in, um, uh, sorry, bookshops here mm. in city. So yes, they are pretty much going online now because sales uh, in the bookshops, uh, they were really reduced to almost nothing. Some, yep. some but on the other hand, uh, internet sales, they are so important right now that they're even creating positions and they're expanding this, uh, this part of their, their work and they're trying to uh, to attract some some new people, or even teach the people who are already working there uh, how to sell people uh, sell books on online because people are searching this uh, more and more. So things have transformed quite uh, radically. I see uh, as a translator, I see that, if, for example, I'm told that the book is going to have a PDF and ebook and all right, right, right. electronic versions. But okay. print will be on demand because we did not sell books for a long period of time. Books have been stuck there. We don't even have place for books anymore. So please mm. don't ask us to print uh, books. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's wait until the pandemic is over and we will, in the meantime, develop the print on demand. Uh, so if the book is solicited to be printed on paper, we will print it uh, on paper. But for now, we yeah. will give your book all the possible uh, versions but online versions or <coughs> so i just mm -hmm. one of my books i had to say yes because i see that this is a new new situation and about my own work as a translator really i, I think that uh, the pandemic also gave me a, a possibility in participating in so many conferences seminars and, and happenings online like this one. Uh, this would have never happened. I would never have reached the people all over the Latin American continent and even outside of it, uh, in China, in Europe. I, I yep. really have been trying to see only the positive and and uh, uh, like the, the good things that it, it brought. I understand it's not for all arts and not for all expressions this is valid, but mm -hmm. I am regenerating texts generated from other people. It really doesn't matter if they're going to be on paper or if they're going to be somewhere in the open <laughs> space. Those mm -hmm. are there to, to be read at some point by someone. So if they exist, if I translate them, there will be audience. And I, mm. I think that going online just increases the audiences. It makes it a global audience. So for yeah. me, it is actually a, a good thing. Mm. I, I'm trying to see it from the positive side. Right. Very right. positive. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Very right. positive. Thank you so much. Thank you, so Thank you very much. Because, you know, I want to be respectful of everyone's time. I know we are all on all different time zones. And that actually lead directly <laughs> to the concluding part of this discussion. Uh, Radina, just uh, what you mentioned now, that everything has become more global because of the pandemic and because of the use of technology all these virtual events we are able to enjoy more global experiences and we are able to connect to people uh, from all over the world even right now like this discussion is a perfect example of that uh, different uh, we are joining from different parts of the world um, do you think it has brought the artists together globally. What do you feel as an artist and a poet or a novelist uh, mm. about the collaboration that's going on? Mm. Um, so, if I could, I? Um, I yeah. Yeah, no, no, no. For me, real quickly, Global Art Project is exactly that. Uh, we were a little bit ahead of the the the, the curve, I think, and, and it's one of the reasons because we have daily interaction uh, uh, internationally, depending on time zones, etc. And of course, through email, through Facebook, through you know uh, any kind of online, and even the U.S. mail because we send what we call fragments around the world to each other as part of our collaborative process, um, and. Um, that collaborative process, I think, 
up to and including what we're doing this moment is what I have been fortunate enough to experience. I, would, I think I would second, second that. I think there has been further collaboration with artists around the world through mm -hmm. the medium of technology. I think so. Somehow it's more culturally accepted now. You can you can connect to somebody and say, "Let's have a Zoom," and people say, "Oh yeah, okay, we'll, we'll yes, have yeah. a Zoom." You know, <laughs> whereas no, you say, we, "Oh no, not another Zoom." No. Oh maybe, oh, yeah, oh yeah, maybe. Yeah. No, 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 you know, yeah. I think definitely there has been a Zoom fatigue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, right. Um, but but it is culturally kind of uh, accepted as, as it were. You know, where before. You had to kind of travel and see people meet people in order to kind of create that connection now it is expected that you would say well let's connect by email find a time you know and have uh, a discussion you know so i did i did uh, a couple of things a few things actually um recently one was a radio interview in new york um last week uh, I did a lecture for Columbia University as well. And again, these things I would have had to travel um, and be there right. and do it. And maybe because of my time, I couldn't have done it, you know, and all these things. But but through the technology it was much easier. Again, this mm -hmm. is quite easy to do, you know. There are lot, lots of positive things about the use of the, the, the technology, you know. Um, but I do think it has to be as well as the real thing i think you know I, I just kind of the real connection the real interaction with people i suppose mm -hmm. i think whatever i say will be just just a repetition because i also took part in a lot of <laughs> webinars and a lot of things like uh, which were happening in india but in another other cities and uh, physically i wouldn't have been able to go to those mm -hmm. many cities if i was before pandemic but now people could think of organizing those events because yeah. now we you know the use of zoom and google meet so innumerable events were there but uh, i think it's a very good idea uh, to start uh, making uh, an excel worksheet people I met over mm. virtual uh, platforms because otherwise when you feel uh, when you meet somebody uh, face to face physically you uh, recognize them but when you meet them virtually next time you may mm. not even remember you're gonna person. forget you're gonna forget <laughs> no you will not forget you thank you so much thank you so yeah, much all you got time you're all you're all so impressive. I, I could not forget you. It was really, really <laughs> nice. It was such an enjoyable discussion. I learned mm. so much on behalf of Antonim. I want to thank you all. Thanks for your time. Thanks for sharing your thoughts and observations Absolutely. with us. Um, I hope we will connect in future yeah. somehow, uh, some way. Uh, <laughs> all right. Take thank care. you. Thank you so much for hosting us. Healthy. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. I'll be in touch. Ciao, ciao. In touch. All right. Bye. 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 Bye.